And welcome to Haven and Waterlooville at Wesley Park. Apologies, we are just underway, so I'll get the lineups to you in a second. A couple of technical difficulties in trying to find uh, a location for us. So your Tudors lineup today in gold: Dean Snedka, uh, Scott Morris right back, Jake Howes left back, McDevitt and Cooper, Ajay Munson and Paul with Christie, Lacey and Omar Ra up front. And your Waterloo lineup is Warmer, Poku, Diara, Magri, Taylor, Clifford, Kedwell, Isiofano, Walton, Wright, and McLennan. As there's a corner early for the Tudors, which is whipped in by Howes towards the back post. And it's in. I'm not sure who's got the final touch on it. It might be. Kyle, is it Carla J? Yeah, I just thought you're picking him up through my mic, so I'll try and hold it as central as possible as the ball's into the box and it's away by Scott Morris and it's going to be picked up now on this left-hand side and cleared forward to Christie. It's not quite going to stay in and we'll, we'll share a mic. We'll get up close and personal. Yeah, I'll get a little bit closer. Oh, Omar, get in there. And uh, as he comes over closer, it's 2-0 and it's Omar Rowe getting his second goal in his first start. By, by you guys listening, so. But it's a nice little ground, isn't it? This yeah, Wesley yeah, Park. It's, it's a it nice is. little 4G. And I've never, um, I've never, I've never played it before. Um, obviously, the the 4G is newly laid. It does look really nice. I was out there doing the warm up, and it was yeah, it was really nice to be there. It's just gonna be put back into the box now. It's gonna be headed. Oh, it's, it's cleared off the line, I think. Is the referee given a humble? Well. I think Nathan Cooper might have handled a ball on the line, and if so, it'll be a red card, and the choose will be down to 10 men, and they are. 10 minutes in, they're two goals up, but Nathan Cooper's been sent off for a humble on the line. It was a ball put into the box by Josh Taylor, I think headed by Daniel Kedwell, I'm not quite sure. And Cooper looked like he headed it off the line, but he must have used a hand, and it'll be a penalty for having a Motolouville, which it looks like... Kedwell's going to take. Come on, Sneds. Dean Sned goals. He's back in the sticks. We didn't think he'd be back so early, did we? After no, not at all. He was back in on Monday. He was back in on Monday on training, and he and he felt fine. So hopefully he feels fine now, um, and he does the job. Backs to the wall now. Well, steps up. And he does slot it in the bottom left corner. Kedwell makes it 2-1 and having Waterlooville now have a one-goal deficit to make up and they have the man advantage for probably the best part of 70 minutes now. To yeah, really accommodating, really nice little ground. It's McLennan now driving forward. He's going to take on Scott Morris. Scott Morris says no and takes it back and he's been outstanding since he's come in in the team of the week as well. It's Christie, is he onside? Flags down, BJ Christie throw on goal to slot it past the keeper. And it's, it's just wide, it's a corner ball. They, they, they slot straight in. Um, really nice guys. Just as we say that, he's both, cut the ball out there. Really yeah. Really nice off the pitch, but as soon as they're on the pitch, they want to win, and I think that's, I think that's great. It's great play by Chris Paul, one of the other new guys. <laughs> nice, lovely little nutmeg there. Tries to find JJ Lacey and does so. Lacey's now got a run at Taylor. Cuts inside, shoots. Oh, it's tipped over the bar by Warner, and after he got his first goal last week, he's looking like a different player as well. And yeah. That'll be a bit of experience. What's he been like since he's come in? What's he like? Because obviously, League One, 40 plus games in a season. Is it, it's into the box. It's going to be cleared away. Is it 
by McDevitt. Paul's going to take it on. Dribbles away. And it, it's one touch, two touch again to get out of their own box as Chris Paul now gets it forward to Christie. Christie for Lacey. Lacey's going to try and hold up his man. Beats him. It's great football. It's Chris Paul now with a chance to strike it from range. He's going to take it on. Takes it a little bit further. Four start wide. Back to Lacey. Lacey now with a chance to drive. Hits it. It's, yes! It's in. JJ Lacey is cut inside on his left foot and he's bent one in off the post. You know, he done that in the warm-up and I said to him, you're going to do that today. Yeah, he's done it in the warm-up. He's done it in the game. And like you were saying... I'm telling you, 10 men, we still look for it. And it's liquid football as well. I think it's Chris Paul breaking from the back. Takes on about three men. Yeah, and he's but, got a point to prove today. And uh, yeah. he has, he's been done it so far. Yeah. It's well done by Scott Morris and in to Mansum. Mansum goes up to Lacey. Lacey, a bit isolated on his right-hand side. He's going to go for goal. Oh, he's over for Issy Afano. He switched out to his left-hand side. He's up against Scott Morris. Cuts into his right. There's it back to the edge of the box for Clifford. Clifford, little reverse ball. Great tackle. Good touch, good turn. It, it's... Ref's given a corner. Thought he'd just hit it on the turn wide. It was Tommy Wright taking the shot, but it's... Uh, no, I did. I think that's... Coming through to you, hopefully not, as it's a corner to be put into the box. And it's up, and it's in, and it's another one back. And it's Musa Diara rising the highest. Heads it down into the four, past the Dean Stedka, and it's 3-2. The deficit is half. Pretty much everyone up. Everyone's back for the Tudors, obviously. You can't be leaving a man up. With the current no, situation. Sure, uh, defend this properly and take it into the half time. Yeah, and it's put into the box. It's a w and it is half time. Exactly, exactly like you said. And yeah, I think and it might be Issy If we get, get chances like we did first half, we, we put them away. Yeah, and we're, we're back, back on the way. And it balls launched forward and it's going to be cleared straight away by McDevitt. That's shifted to the left hand side. McLennan is still on. Rory Deacon puts it into the back post. It's away by Howells. Not very far. And it's going to come through, is it? It's a shot. Oh, it's a shot by Taylor. It's blocked and it's a corner, but... Um, 10, 15, 20 minutes, whatever it is. Uh, we've just got to ride it. Go up the other end when we get the chance. Well, as we say, that's a brilliant save by Dean Snedker. What a brilliant save. It's, uh, it's Sam Magri, I think, has got up at the back post and headed it down into the floor, and he's plunged to his right-hand side and parried it away. And it's Magri now. He's going to get across into the box. AJ gets across. It's going to come to Taylor. No, it's not. It's going to come to right. That's a Poku. That's left on side again for Clifford, I think. Rory Deacon running at them from the left. Drops a couple of step overs. Cuts on his right foot. Dinks it back post. Flip goal was saved by Snedka. Brilliant save. They're claiming it's gone in. It's not. And on the follow up, it's, it's Tommy Great Wright save. absolutely smashes it. Gotta be strong and just deal with it. Yeah, as it does go forward at DR as you'd expect. He wins the flick on, but it's uh, straight at yeah, Scott again, Morris and it's up and away. Out of it well. This is where we need Devs to talk like he like we know he's good at. Talk to Ryan. Yeah, Rory how's Deacon. He, how's he sitting in front of him now? His left hand side. His experience. His man to the back post. It's up. And it's off the line as you say it. Jake Howes. The relax. There we go. And Scott Morris right, does, does well again and. Don't, don't want to keep bigging him up, but he deserves no, no, it, doesn't no. he? Yeah, yeah. They all do today. All do. All do today. Great shift. That's full Get time, it. and it's 3 2 to the Tudors. What played a win for the most boys. of the game with that 10 is, men. It's yeah, a 3 2 what. win against a very, very good side away from home, and it is a win on a 4G surface. Good evening, welcome to the Tudor Talk post-match reaction show after the Tudors defeated the Hawks 3-2 down at Wesley Park. Uh, it was certainly a game of two halves with the Tudors dominating in attack early on in that first half. But it was very much back to the wall in the second, uh, certainly down to 10 men for, for the majority of the game. But uh, a player who showed his worth during the game after scoring the penalty on Saturday was JJ Lacey and he caught up with Jack Devonport. 
JJ, a brilliant win against a, a side that are uh, high up in the table considering they've only played five games to our to our eleven. So that's a it's a great scalp. Yeah, it's, it's definitely a, a good win. Um, we knew that coming here because they obviously played Sunday and had a long trip. We, we could probably the best time to play them. Um, and we started quick and then sort of had to dig in for the last seventy after uh, Coops decided to punch one. Um, but no, very happy. Um, work, team worked very hard. Um, but now, good win. And playing, I'd say, best part of 18 minutes with 10 men, how difficult is that? Because not only on your fitness, but it's such a mentality thing as well. It must be to just, we didn't sit back just to really go for it even more. Yeah, no, we're getting used to playing with 10, um, having 10 ins off week in, week out. But um, yeah, I mean, the lads are good. Like the talking from Devs and Housie and, and everyone, it, it brings you through it. And hearing people like Row on the bench and talking you through it and getting, you, getting your shape sorted. Um, no, it's class, it's class. And a goal from you as well. And you said to me it's a swinger, but I'm not having it. You cut inside a couple of little one twos, and you've bent one far post and off the post with your weak foot. Just talk us through that one. Yeah, I don't score many with my left, um, but but no, I fit that quite cleanly, and sort of I think it, I knew it was in as soon as I hit it. So um, yeah, I'm happy with that one. It's nice to get one from open play. And it's a win on a 4G surface as well. That's our first of the season. Not one at home yet, but is that sort of the last monkey off the back? Yeah, it's, it's, it is. I mean, it's, it's been coming, hasn't it? We've been starting to pick up points and pick up results, and um, we're looking better on it each week, each time we play on it. And um, yeah, come, I'm sure we'll pick up a home win soon. Um, but picking up points on the road, not many places or teams will come here and, and pick up three points. A player who is very familiar to these parts of the world is Chris Paul, and Jack caught up with him to find out what his return was like to his former club. Chris, a win against your former side, is it mixed emotions or are you buzzing? No, to be honest, I'm buzzing, you know, um, you know, football, that's football for you. You know, you change teams, you move on. Um, but now I'm at Hemel. Yeah, now I was buzzing with the win. And you looks not out of place at all for someone that's not been here uh, for more than a couple of months. You looks right at home in that midfield with other players like Sam Manson, who's not been here that long at all. Yeah, I mean, you know, Sammy's got the experience, which helped me a lot. Um, but yeah, no, the whole boys, all the boys, they talk to you, you know, throughout the whole 90 minutes, we was consistent, the boys dug in. But um, yeah, every single one of us, we you know put the shift in and we got the result that we deserved. We went down to 10 men. Did that in a weird way maybe spur them on, just give that extra 10% everyone to make up for the, the lost man? Yeah, well, I mean, you know, we've done it last week. Um, happened again this week, but, you know, a lot, a lot early on in the game. You know, we're playing with um, 10 men for the last, what, 80 minutes of the game. Um, but no, every, every single one of us, we dug in, even the subs when they came on, they were excellent. Um, and I thought the boys, you know, you deserve, deserve the three points. And it's another away win, but this one's on an artificial surface. Is that a psychological thing out of the way? You know, is that a, as big a thing as it seems? Yeah, I mean, definitely. We, you know, we're unbeaten on grass. Um, our, our AstroTurf performances, I mean, they haven't been, you know, as, as bad as what people might think. But, you know, now that we've got the 90 minutes and the win on this, on this pitch, you know, we, we can go forward and move on. And finally, we've got... Uh, a little break now before the, the next league fixture. How do we come back after that and keep going? Obviously, the fans will be there. Yeah, especially with the fans, you know, it's going to be going to be a big push for us. You know, that's going to be our 12th man um, with them back in the ground. I'm sure I'm sure we can just push on from here now and, you know, start start getting the wins that we deserve. And a man who would be very much looking forward to the fans returning is manager Lee Bircham. And I bet he's smiling from ear to ear right now. And he caught up with Jack just after full time. Lee, a brilliant win against a side that are difficult to beat, as we've seen by results in the league so far. They've gone far in the FA Cup. How big of a scalp is that? It's massive. It's massive. Um, but you know, we make it hard for ourselves. We, we really do. But the character building, it's, it's just been phenomenal in that way. The, the way they've grouped together. And they're a proper team in there now. And we, we've been saying this for a little while, that it will take time. And listen, it's still... Other bits in there that ain't perfect, but they're grafting with each other and you can't ask no more, you know. We have said it after a few weeks, you know, we're waiting for a rubber to green one game and waiting for a rubber. I felt, look, maybe not because we had a little sending off and stuff like that and we made it hard, but today we had Jake Howe's head went off the line, other bits and bobs. So yeah, maybe for that side, we say we got our rubs at the green today, but we still could have scored a lot more, which is the funny thing. We should have been three or four up, you know, especially when BJ goes through one on one, but to a man to defend that long I mean what was that I've done how work he got sent off 15 minutes in to defend against the team that will be up there you know with the resources they've got um, 
and the players they've got, there's no question they'll be in and around the promotion spots, not the playoff spots. So, yeah, uh, absolutely outstanding. We're, we're all of us, we're, we're cream crackers after that. But it's, um, yeah, I, I can't praise it, praise a lot of them enough. Not just the players that played, the boys that come on, put the shift in. And even, you know, I know everyone can't see on there, but I'm, I'm looking out on the pitch, I can see Jake Evans still running afterwards. And he was celebrating like anyone when... Um, we won. Danny Bonus the same. Um, it's very hard to do that when you're not playing and everyone just sees the lads that are playing. But it's the it's the, the backroom boys that are, you know, everyone says it in football, you're only as good as your weakest player. And in there at the minute, we haven't got that. So long may that continue. But look, we'll enjoy this little 10 day break now. Um, we haven't won two on a spin before. We've done that now. Two very hard away games as well. And we beat the 3G curse, which has been overhanging us. So, we're ticking boxes as we go, but as I said, brilliant after today. Saying that we're winning on 4G and that's the, another tick off, is that the last one? You know, we've got the clean sheet, we've got the wins on the bounce, a win on 4G, is it just a win at home now? No, it's a nil-nil at half-time, I think. That, that's when we ain't had or get a nil-nil game or, do you know, what you know, well, the next tick in the box we're going to get is, is complete the game with 11 men because <laughs> Sam Mantham's joined and I think he only thinks we play with 10 men anyway, but um, what a welcome to non-league Aspen. But listen, you... I've got to give praise to some of the players today, like everyone in, in, in particular. You know, Schneds, he's at fault for their second goal. He knows that. We've said that to him at half time. A little bit at the first, but second half, he was absolutely magnificent. Second half, you know, coming off his line and gobbling things up. He was brilliant that way. So, that uh, and Chrissy Paul coming against his old club, um, he was outstanding. In there, Sammy, Sam, Sammy Mant, I'm in there. They look like they've played together for years, which is credit to the two of them because they're good footballers. But no, you could go through a load of them. I mean, JJ's, JJ's goal, it, it's the longest he's ever gone. I've known JJ a long time now. It's the longest he's ever gone without a goal. Um, Saturday was a great monkey off his back and, you know, he, he absolutely smashed that goal in the day, which was brilliant. But it's lovely to see. It's, it's getting there. You know, we, we certainly ain't having ourselves and we're certainly not... When we was getting beat, we, we, we didn't get too down um, and we didn't get too carried away with getting beat. We just got our heads down and worked hard. And now we're winning games. We're not going to go the other way and start thinking we're, you know, we've arrived or we're a good side now. We're going to treat exactly the same as when we was losing and just keep our heads down and doing what we do. And then finally, looking forward, fans going to be coming back now. Yeah. What sort of impact do you think that has on, on proceedings on the game? It's, it's what we do it for. You know, it's non-league, it's... It's not about anything else, really. You're doing it for the fans and the atmosphere. And I'm I'm a fan, you know. It, it's when I wasn't watching QPR, I'd be coming watching Hemel, so or not playing. So it's it's my town, so I know exactly what they're going through. And it'd be lovely, it'd be lovely to have fans here today, see results like this. But a lot of teams can say that. But of course, it's important. We we need the fans back. They're massive to us, and they've got a good group of lads they can get behind now. And you know, maybe a month ago, six weeks ago, they we might not have been saying it, but. Like I said to you and, and Dan and, and Jack, I, I said, we will have to ch keep changing, chopping and changing things till we get the right personnel in the right characters. Not always the right players, but the right characters that we need in that changing room. And look, if we can keep these boys now, they'll have a good side so the supporters can be proud of this side and know they're working, you know, massively for them. There we are then. That's uh, manager Lee Birch. I'm absolutely delighted with his side's performance today, taking all three points from arguably one of the league's favourites and strongest sides. But as he said, let's not get too carried away. It's all about hard work and keeping your head down and slowly ticking off, uh, ticking the boxes um, and, and ticking off each game as it comes. Now, as we've uh, referred to uh, during this show, fans will return on Saturday, the 12th of December. Please stay tuned to the website and social media. We will give you all of the information that you need to know. Please just bear with us because obviously uh, we do get the information uh, from the league and have to dissect it and put together our own processes and protocols. But as soon as we have that, we'll let you know because trust me, we want you back and uh, we very much look forward to seeing you soon. But for now, goodbye.